Good morning. This is PW, and I'm here to show you how to be a lead editor for our Studio Broadcast Productions program here at Granada High School. After you complete this training and have shadowed the lead editor a couple of times, you should be able to complete this job in three or four class periods. This is a long training, broken into several smaller chunks, so please try to follow the pieces in order. When you're done, though, you're welcome to skip around and review any smaller tasks that you need to. When working as lead editor, there are many things that can simplify your job. If the panel operator is doing a good job and cutting camera angles at the correct time, it will save you time. If the teleprompter operator keeps the pace smooth and the anchors are able to run through the entire script completely in one of their takes, it will save you time. If the lighting director has set the lights correctly, it will save you time. If the audio engineer keeps the anchors audio balanced and even, it will save you time. If the floor manager marked the slate and slated the takes correctly, it will save you time. If the computer graphics generator number one and two are able to locate and place B-roll, create and place your lower thirds, create your opening title sequence and credits, all of those things will save you time. So it's really important for the director to be doing their job and checking up on everyone involved with their show. Because if they don't, all of that extra work falls on you, the lead editor. The lead editor's checkoff sheet will walk you through all of the activities that you need to complete. Before you get started, it's important for you to have your permission to miss class as lead editor page signed by your teachers ahead of time. This is best to have completed by Friday, the week before, but at the very latest, it should be completed by Monday. Second period is oftentimes taken up by copying footage, so if you can get the show filmed, receive the media, start copying it to the production computer, and then leave for second period, it's a good start of the day. Remember that you can't be released from any class that you don't have a B or higher in, so if you have a C, D, or F in any class, or if the teacher doesn't feel it's an appropriate time in the lessons for you to miss, we can't get you released. So the earlier you speak with your teachers about being a lead editor, the better you and the director can plan. You can work things out with your teacher, but many of them like you to go to class for the first five minutes or so to take any door quizzes, turn in any homework, and get the work for that day before you come back to studio to edit. Some teachers also like you to return for the last five or ten minutes so that you can get the homework for the day. This will all depend on your teacher. Some teachers will also mark you absent that day, while others might mark you as present. That's why this sheet is so important. On the day of editing, you will give this sheet to me, and I will turn it into the office to clear any tardies or absences that day. The next important sheet for you is the broadcast data page in the director's binder. The director will indicate who is working on the show. Computer Graphics Generator 1 creates the title sequence, the credits, and locates or creates B-roll for you. Computer Graphics Generator 2 creates the lower thirds and helps to choose or create the backgrounds for the show. On the day of the show, it's important for you to be in the production room to keep track of the best takes. Knowing what segments and stories are going to be in the show can also help you plan. Some well-organized directors will also plan out the show on the Order of Segments Stories section. If this is completed, it makes your job much, much easier. A week or so before the show, you're going to create a dated folder on the desktop to store all of your files. For this activity, please add practice to the name of your folder as well as your name and your partner's name. For this activity, you should not be working with anyone else who you have done a prior activity with. So, if you're working with someone who you have also worked with on the keying project, B-roll, syncing audio or video, interview, anchor assessment, audio elevisos, or other project or activity, please stop what you are doing and change partners. You will lose 20% of your grade for this project if you complete it with someone whom you have already worked with. My footage is all on my external drive, but yours should be sitting in the upper left-hand corner of the desktop. That folder should be called Lead Editor Practice 
week six El Aviso raw. Inside the folder, you should have week six B-roll, week six backgrounds, week six lower thirds with a project library in it, raw H4n, raw panel, segments, sounds, and the finished video El Aviso. On your desktop, you should start off by creating a new folder. Name this one Week 6 Video El Aviso Practice, your name and your partner's name. Inside that, you'll create folders for raw H4n. You'll copy the files from the Audio Engineer's SD card into here. B-roll. This folder will also hold all of the B-roll that is given to you by reporters or located by your computer graphics generator number one. Backgrounds. You'll place any background designs that your computer graphics generator two comes up with in here. Footage. To hold the footage from your panel operator or perhaps the cameras if something didn't go right with the panel. Segments where your segment producers will copy their segments to. Lower thirds, for your computer graphics generator two to place their Final Cut Pro library into that contains your lower thirds. And audio, for additional sound or music pulled from licensed sites or created by our students in GarageBand or other appropriate programs. Now, open up Final Cut Pro. Once it is open, make sure to close any open libraries. Right-click on the library and choose Close Library. We have our library area here. Once we have footage, it will show up in our event or footage areas. We also have our timeline, our viewer, and our lower panels. We have panels here for our effects and another for our transitions. In our upper panels, we have music, photos, and movies, which show us what you have in iTunes, GarageBand, or Photos. We also have the Titles and Generators panel. We also have our Inspector panel and our Audio Meters. If you don't see your Audio Meters, click on the Mini Meters next to your LCD readout and it will bring up your full-sized meters. These audio meters are extremely important for you to have up at all times. Now, create a new library by choosing File, New, Library in the menu. Name it Week 6 Video El Aviso Practice, parentheses, your name and your partner's name, end parentheses. Keep the .fcp bundle at the end of the file name, and we want to save it in the Movies folder. The Movies folder is the default saving location for Final Cut Pro. Remember that Final Cut Pro will always create a default event for us with the date. Change that event name to match our folders. We'll have a Footage and Audio from Show folder, another one named B-Roll, another named Sound Effects and Music, another named Segments, Titles, and Credits. We will also need an event for our project timelines. We might make more later on but this is a good start for the number and style of events that we've created. We'll create a new project inside the Timelines event named Week 6 Video El Aviso Practice, your name and your partner's name. We'll keep it set to the default settings so that it adjusts the settings based on the first clip in. This is mostly all that we can do a week ahead of time. A couple to a few days before the show, the director and computer graphic generators will choose backgrounds and themed audio music to use. They'll copy those files into the proper folders that you created on the desktop of the production computer. They will also choose the design for the lower thirds. When they are finished, they will place their actual Final Cut Pro project library from their computer into your folder. They will also create your title sequence and graphics into your segment folder. Finally, 
they'll also copy B-roll into your B-roll folder. Reporters may also copy B-roll into your folder as well. On the day of filming, you want to be inside the production room. You're not there to discipline people, but you want to keep track of the best takes. And if you notice that something isn't going correctly, notify the director so that they can coach or guide their crew a bit more so that you end up with the best material possible. During take one, I'll take notes about how that take goes, how the timing of the panel operator is, how close the camera operators and audio engineer are starting and ending their recordings. As it goes on, you might mark down which take you believe is best or any that you just want to skip and not even bother syncing. After recording is finished, you will copy the files from your H4N into your folder and the panel footage from the solid state drive into your folder. When they're done copying, Give those cards back to me so that we can keep them safe until we know things are working properly. For today's activity, I'm not going to have you copy the files from my practice folders to your folders. But know that you will need a set of folders to put all of your stuff in once you are a lead editor. So now that you have all of your materials, it's time to begin importing the media into Final Cut Pro. Click on the Import Media button, or in the menu, choose File, Import, Media. In the Media Import window that opens, notice that it's set to add to existing event project timelines. That's because the project timelines event was highlighted when I chose to import media. Change that event to the B-roll event. Normally, you will always copy the files to the library. For this activity though, I'd like you to change that to leave files in place. This is because today's files are about 98 gigabytes in size, and it uses a lot of space to duplicate those files on your local hard drive, especially since you've already copied them to your computer. You're going to select your desktop and find your folder called Lead Editor Practice Week 6. Then, I'd like you to choose the Week 6 B-Roll folder and choose Import Selected. Now, there is an HTML file inside here that's not going to import, and that's okay. That file shouldn't be in there anyway. Click Continue to continue the import. Next, go to Import Media again, and you are going to add to the existing event footage and audio from show. Select your raw H4N folder and your raw panel folder and then click import. Next, I'll choose my segments, titles, and credits event. We'll import media into that existing event and I'll choose my segments. The titles and credits aren't created yet because we'll be making those. So it's only the segments that we'll copy right now. I'll also choose our sound effects and music and import our sounds into that event. The item I'm missing are the backgrounds. I'll create a new event called Backgrounds. I'll import media and import week six backgrounds into it. I've chosen to not bring in the lower thirds just yet because it's a Final Cut library and we'll explain more about that later. So at this point, filming is done We've copied our media, returned the original cards and drives, imported our media to Final Cut Pro, and now we're going to see if our video footage matches with the audio. We can open the event footage from the show, and we can see right away that neither the panel operator nor the audio engineer set their date and time correctly. This can help out a lot if you are having issues later on, but for today, we're okay but it's a good thing to check on in the future as a safeguard. I do not like to view my media separated by date, so I'm going to choose my panel options, and I'm going to choose to group clips by none. This will just put the media in alphabetical order by their name. In Capture Zero, I can see this is only six seconds long and is just during sound checks. 
they're still lining up the cameras and doing a test read. On Capture One, I can visibly see that this there. is Take One if I want to listen to him, I can. Video Elaviso. <coughs> you can also listen to him. Video Elaviso, week six. So we know that this is Take One Video. I'll name it Week Six Take One. If we zoom in here, we can all see a tall spike right here. We can also listen to it. We know that the clapboard is right there, and we know that Juan Carlos said his information just before that. He didn't say take one, but we do know that it's take one. For the second take, visually, he didn't even write take two, but he said it at least. To save time, I'll select all of it and copy its name. That way, I can paste it into the audio when it's correct. I'll continue for take three and take four, and finally, we'll have take five. Luckily on this one, everything matches up and is pretty smooth. Other than that one extra panel clip, it's perfect. This isn't always the case though, so checking their date and time and checking their duration can also help figure out which audio clips go with which video clips. It's really important to make sure that the floor manager writes the information on the slate, states the information on the recording, and has that information visible in the shot. Now that we have everything properly named, we'll synchronize our video files with the H4n audio files. If this part confuses you at all, there is a much more detailed walkthrough and checkoff sheet about syncing video and audio files in Final Cut Pro. There is a video on YouTube and a checkoff sheet in class. We are going to select the two Take One files. Right click on one of them and choose Synchronize Clips. This will create a new synced file with a chain link icon underneath them. We'll continue to do that for all five of these sets. Then we're going to double click on the icon for the first synced file and open it up in its own timeline. Please note this is not our project timeline. If we click on the middle and play a bit, we can hear and see that it is synchronized well. Services or online at the web store for $25. While it's playing, I'm going to reduce the camera audio down to negative infinity. After the test, you will receive a score report showing your strengths and weaknesses. Then I'll adjust the H4n audio so that the meter is peaking at zero. That provides the opportunity to finish your last two years of high school at Las Positas College. Participating students earn both high school and college credits while in the program. Middle College will be accepting applicants from students in the classes of 2020 and 2021. If you listen to the audio quality here, you'll hear that the H4n audio from the lavalier microphones is so much better than the camera audio. Showing your strengths and weaknesses. The Middle College High School program at Las Positas College is an exciting option for high school students. It is an educational program that... By and large, they're peaking at the correct level of zero. We'll check the second anchor and make sure that it's close. Would you like to travel the summer of 2020? Spots for the New Zealand and Australia 2020 trip are filled, filling up fast. Take one is usually a difficult take. Anchors are usually just reading it for the first or second time. We'll go ahead and do this to all five synced files. Trials will be held from Monday, January 28th through Wednesday, January 30th at 3.30 p.m. each day. Those trials will take place at Poppy Ridge. If you are new to... If you're having a difficult time getting your levels of audio to adjust at the correct level, you can click on the Timeline Settings button and increase the height of your clips. Doing this increases the scale and makes it easier to adjust by individual decibels. Now we'll finish up our last one. Or ACT. 
Students can pick up a test and register in Student Services or online at the web store for $25. After the test, you will receive the score report showing your strengths and weaknesses. Test and register in Student Services or online at students. It is an educational program that provides the opportunity to finish. Now we'll hit the timeline back arrow until we're back at our project timeline called Week 6 Video Eleviso Practice, Your Name and Partner's Name. On our checkoff sheet, beginning with the best take, favorite anchor announcements. I'm going to start with take three. I'll drag it down. I know that I can trim off the intro until they start. I can also trim off the ending. Now we can go through and check each story to make sure that there are no mistakes. Golf this spring, tryouts will be coming soon. Tryouts will be held from Monday, January 28th through Wednesday, January 30th at 3.30 p.m. each day. Those tryouts will take place at Poppy Ridge. It Go ahead and pause me for a few minutes. Watch the entire take three and see if there are any stories in there that you would want to find a better version of. Okay, now that you've found a couple, here is one that I want to change. I'm showing your strengths and weaknesses. The middle college high... This one right here. The anchors sort of looked at each other to see what was going on. Janine also stumbled a little bit on her story. The panel operator also had a large gap between the stories. This isn't really the panel operator's fault, though. The teleprompter operator had an extra line between each story, which causes the anchors to pause between stories. If you have a really bad panel operator, having those extra spaces can help because it allows you to cut and trim the edges. But if you have a good panel operator and your teleprompter operator has those extra lines, it forces you to cut and trim those edges, and it's a lot more work that you don't need to do. Over here, you can also see that exaggerated gap and spacing. Day will be donated. Now here's Mason and Cole with a new segment. Thanks, guys. There will be Obviously, we want a bit of gap between the segments and the stories, but not between stories and stories. From here, we'll go on to part two of the video for the rest of editing with take three, and we'll also insert a story from take two. Then we need to go back to part one again and finish up with the take five, selecting two portions and bringing them down into the timeline. Normally, we would always start with take five, because that should be our best take. But we're going to pretend that we don't have a good take five, or even a good take four, and that take three is the best take that we have. We'll put take three into the timeline and go through it to see if there's a story that we don't like. We're going to choose the synchronized clip titled Week 6 Take 3 in our event and favorite it after the clapboard. We'll move that favorited clip down into the project timeline. We can still trim some from the front to clean it up, as well as trim some from the end to clean it up. We would then take a while to evaluate all stories to see if we need to replace any of them. I would like you to pause this video and watch all of Take 3 to find any stories that you think should be replaced by a story from Take 2. After you've evaluated it, Come back and start this video again. I'm glad that you watched all of Take 3. When I watched it, this is the story that I would like to work on replacing. It's the Australia trip story. Listen to the end of this story. Last chance to sign up. There is a parent meeting next Thursday, January 24th at 7 p.m. in room 606. If you are interested in the trip but cannot attend the meeting, make sure to stop and see Miss Bailey and Mrs. Newkirk or Miss Bear for more information. This is a bucket list trip, but it's not school sponsored. Right there, she looks away and had some issues with a couple of words near the end of the story. 
I want to use the blade tool to cut this story out and replace it with a version of that story from take two. I'm going to mark the spot in the footage where the camera switches over to Aaron. I'm going to press the letter M on the keyboard to drop a marker on the footage. Here's the Martin Luther King Jr. story. There will be no school on Monday due to Martin Luther King Jr. Day. See you on Tuesday. And here is where the camera switches over to Janine. I'm going to stay on the last frame of Aaron before the camera switches to Janine and drop another marker. The markers now indicate the entire Australia trip story. Now, in the event, I will look at take two and locate the Australia story. So we want to replace Janine's story about Australia. So we'll come up here to the event. Would you like to travel? And choose either where her audio starts or where her video starts as the beginning or in point. Then we'll go find the end of that story. There is an absolute suck. A school sponsored. It went into Aaron's video a little bit while Janine was still talking. At the end of a story, we have to get the last portion, whether it's audio or video, and select it as our out point. Now that I have it selected and favorited, I can drag the replacement clip from take two over the top of the bad clip from take three down in our timeline. This is a bucket list chip, but it's not school sponsored. The new piece is just a little bit longer than the old one, probably because of where the anchor paused between sentences or words. I'm going to use the blade tool to cut this story out of take three. When I hit delete, both the take three clip and the take two replacement clip goes away. Let's undo that. This happens because the take two clip has a tail which attaches it to the timeline. Because it's attached to the bad take three clip, when take three is deleted, it takes both parts. So we need to move the take two clip over here a bit while we delete the take three clip. Then we can place the take two replacement clip into the spot. Now let's see what we have. Dr. King Jr. Day. See you on Tuesday. Would you like to travel the summer of 2020? School sponsored. In both of these situations, we have jump cuts because we're looking at Erin when she finishes her story here, and we're looking at Erin as Janine starts her story here. Then, on the other end, we're looking at Erin as Janine finishes her story, and we're looking at Erin again when Erin starts her story. I'm going to select all three clips, the replacement story, the clip before it, and the clip after it. Then I'll right click and choose to expand the audio components. This gives us access to the audio of the video to adjust it separately from its video. But it's not school sponsored. Now here is where Janine's audio actually ends. But it's not school sponsored. Now I can pull this audio back to where Janine stops talking, and then we'll zoom in on it some. Then I'm going to shrink the extra footage until it closes the gap.
Now it looks like the panel operator was just a little bit off on their timing, which is not a horrible thing. I'm going to fade the audio where they overlap, and that will help to blend the background sound a little bit more. Concert. Hey, you're not a student. Now we'll do the same thing to the front of the Australia trip story. See you on Tuesday. Would you like to? Here is where Janine begins. See you on Tuesday. Would you like? Aaron is still finishing talking, though. If I go any further with the clip in front, I am going to get Janine again from take three. If I come back any further with the clip from take two, we get Aaron again. So it's not ideal, but it's better than having a bad story in the take. If I come back anymore with the later clip, it causes a jump cut on Aaron. So visually, we have to be at the end of Aaron and the beginning of Janine. It's not horrible, but it does overlap just a little bit. See you on Tuesday. Would you like to travel the summer? See you. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. See you on Tuesday. Would you like to travel the summer of 2020? Spots for the new Z. We do not see their mouths at the same time, though, so it's believable that Erin could be finishing her story while Janine starts her story. Now, I'd like you to export out this edit that you have made of take three with the replacement take two story. Choose Share Master File. Check your settings and make sure that your video codec is set to H.264. Your duration should be around four minutes. Click Next. On your desktop, I want you to make a new folder. Name that folder Lead Editor Exports by your name and partner's name. Click Create. Now for the video file name. We're going to name this one Lead Editor dash Take 3 with Take 2 Story by your name and partner's name. Then we'll save that. Now that the file is exported, we're going to change the name of the project timeline we were working in to add Take 3 with Take 2 Story dash in front of the project timeline name. Now create a new project timeline and name it Week 6 Lead Editor Practice by your name and partner's name. Now, with the new timeline, Week 6 Lead Editor Practice by your name and partner's name, we are now going to favorite our best pieces from this best take and bring them together in the timeline. <laughs> to select this portion, I'm going to start at the beginning of the show with my cursor. I'll click down and drag until the intro to the segment before the mistake was made. When I let go, that range is selected. I'll click F on the keyboard to favorite that portion. Then I'll locate where the mistake was made and go just past it. As soon as they started the retake, I'll press I on the keyboard to set the end point. Then, I'll skim through the rest of the show, and at the conclusion, I'll press O on the keyboard to set the out point. Once I have these two sections favorited, I just drag them both down into the new timeline. 
Because we're going to have a segment between the two pieces, I'm going to insert a placeholder by going to the menu and selecting Edit, Insert Generator, Placeholder. Once the placeholder is in place, I can roll back the end of this clip so that there isn't as much space between the intro and the segment. With that one finished, I'm going to locate the other segments. In by today. Now here's Nerdy News. Now that I know where Nerdy News is going, I'm going to razor blade this part right here and insert a placeholder. This is where Nerdy News will be. We can adjust the spacing between the intro and outro in the segments later. What we don't have is an intro and outro to QQ. Because the producer of QQ didn't fill out their segment page, the teleprompter operator didn't write in an intro for that segment. We can locate a good spot to place that segment in one of our upcoming tutorials for Lead Editor. This is the end of part one. Please export your file by clicking the share button, then choosing master file. Save the file inside your exports folder and name it take five edit with placeholders, lead editor practice, your name and your partner's name.